Hey guys, DB Rye here, and well, continuing with the what if Sailor Moon was in the Dragon Ball Z movies, well, it, finally, I get to do my favourite one, but I'm pretty sure it's only my favourite because it was the first Dragon Ball Z movie I ever watched, or TV special, whatever you, whatever you want to call it. And that is, what if Sailor Moon was in Lord Slug? And well, our story begins just like at the start. Gohan and Icarus are doing their little dance for Piccolo by the waterfall, where, well, it is pretty much discovered that Piccolo cannot stand the sound of whistling. Yeah, it turns out, Nam turns out Namekians have, um... Or at least Super Namekians have um, enhanced hearing, very, very quite enhanced hearing. I'm pretty sure it's the case of all Namics, not just the case of Piccolo and Slug. But anyways, with that, Piccolo is sensing some oncoming danger quickly approaching its way towards the planet, and well. It turns out to be a big asteroid heading straight for the planet. And, um, well, Bulma, Chi Chi, Icarus, Oolong, um, and even Army, aka Sailor Mercury, are out to, um, pretty much watch the devastation. And seeing, well, what actually happens. They're hoping, of course, that Goku and Krillin can at least deter the asteroid blast like in the original. And well, as it turns out, no, didn't budge the asteroid at all. And Goku and Krillin are sent whirling away, landing somewhere else on, on planet Earth. And meanwhile, the asteroid does indeed hit, but not in the way people are expecting, as the asteroid turns out to be a shell of some sort, revealing a vehicle inside which has landed in the nearby city where Gohan, Chi Chi, and all the others were overlooking. It's not over! We, we, we're still alive! Yeah, so long, I think so. Wow, look! The the stars are falling from the sky. Chill out, it's just the meteorites from the planet. Well, I suppose, yeah, you would call it a planet. Planet to it definitely was a planet-sized, like, asteroid. Because that's what they do, don't they? Yes. They terra-freeze planets and use them as cruisers. That's right. That's why they're on Earth. And, well, they do notice, um, the weird ship standing just um, nearby the city and well everyone is going in to investigate Oolong the only one opposed to the idea and well everyone is gathered around the ship as a bunch of um, aliens begin leaving the ship all of them with little S symbols on the left side of their chest or shoulder meeting Slug I'm guessing and meanwhile, Lord Slug, inside his ship, along with his, um, henchmen, the only ones whose name I can remember at this point is Mita Mancha, but yeah, anyway, he's trying to get a calculation on how long it's going to take to terra-freeze the planet, and he wasn't happy that it was going to take ten days, according to one of his little servants who he just beamed away, and, um, he also beamed away this other guy. A guy he just simply called Commander. He made the mistake of reminding Lord Slug on how old he was, which, hmm, I gotta say that probably wasn't the smartest idea of Lord Slug, because we had no idea how strong this guy was. He might have been his strongest henchman. Anyways, not the point. I'm opinionating the movie when I'm supposed to be what ifing it. And so, just like in the original. Lord Slug's henchmen begin firing among the populace, and well, 
Gohan and um, Army decide to rush into battle. Army doing her transformation. Mercury Star Power Makeup! Doing her transformation. Meanwhile, Gohan's already going in there and taking it to the soldiers. And, um, well, thanks to Mercury for help happening with her, um, Mercury Water Rhapsody! She's actually doing a fine job taking out soldiers herself. And, um, basically, when she does manage to find herself cornered by a bunch of soldiers, she's able to use her bubble spray mist in order to escape the oncoming damage. However, they're not the... as the main bad guys are watching on through the, um... through their weird orb-looking thing. I guess they took that idea from Power Rangers. Observe the globe. <laughs> Anyways, they discover Gohan has a Dragon Ball on his head and that his technique is superb. His power level is, he seems to be way above the soldiers. And well, this is where the other bad guys essentially get involved with everything here. And Lord Slug manages to steal the Dragon Raider, much like in the original. And, um, well, just like in the original, Slug is able to gather all seven Dragon Balls and wishes for eternal youth, restoring him to maximum power. He will never grow old and doesn't have to worry about losing his power ever again. And, um, well, essentially, Goku and Krillin have now finally awakened and they get a sensu beam from Yajirobe, much like in the original, but now we get to the front lines of the battlefield, because Gohan, who is not coming alone this time, he shows up with the entire members of the Sailor Guardians, and is basically leading a full-on assault against Lord Slug's soldiers. And, well, with um, all the Sailor Guardians working together as a team, plus you got Sailor Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, and Saturn there, and of course, Chibiusa and Tuxedo Mask, it's um, definitely looking like a completely different battle than what we got in the original. Plus, as soon as Gohan starts getting himself into a little bit of danger, like he always does, it's okay, Piccolo is there to save him, like he always is. Hey, dust it off, kid, because now the real battle begins. And, well, Lord Slug has sent in his main henchman, the weird orange... I don't know, looks like he could be a cousin of Dodoria's. And the weird... light blue, blonde-looking guy, who I'm pretty sure might be from the Demon Realm just going off his appearance, and of course, Midamacha, the little green freaky looking dude who can spawn three mini versions of himself, and I actually suspect that he might be a, hatched from a Lord Slug egg, because his appearance and what he's wearing reminds me of what Mount, of um, of um, what's his name, Tambourine. He definitely fits the profile of a demonic Namekian. Anyways... Not the point, the battle is on, and well, none of um, Lord Slug's henchmen are taking it easy because, well, they're fighting with overwhelming numbers. In fact, it's a complete all-off battle because you've still got the remaining soldiers helping in as well. And well, Piccolo manages to separate the, the big, strong, and dumb orange one from the others like he does in the original, and essentially deals with him easily enough. And, um, however, they're having a bit of, di everyone's having a bit of difficulty with the other two henchmen, who are being backed up by soldiers, and, um, 
their unorthodox technique is throwing the Sailor Guardians for, for a loop. And um, Sa Sailor Moon is just running away as best as she can, trying to avoid the free mini mini marches from sucking her energy. No, I don't want you freaky things to touch me. No! <laughs> Come on, we gotta have that Sailor Moon comedy in there somewhere. But it's all right. Tuxedo Mask is there to the fender with a wave of his um, with his stick. He swats the three of them away. And um. Midamacha is uh, trying to uh, restrain Chibiusa, who, um, with a simple wave of her own Sailor Guardian one thing, a gift from her mother, Neo's Queen Serenity, from her timeline, she's um, jabbing Midamacha in the face with a bunch of um, magical love hearts. Ow! Ooh, this is hurting! Ow! Ooh, get away from me! And well, the numbers are ultimately proving to be um, too good because, well, now Goku and Krillin have now shown up and the two of them basically make little to no work of Midamacha and um, the other guy. And this causes the remaining soldiers to run away to the spaceship Essentially, this is where Lord Slug makes his appearance. If you're here about the soldier job, use the side entrance. Thanks, but no thanks. We're here to stop you. And then we finally get the Sailor Guardians get it, giving their little speech. We are the pretty guardians who fight in the name of justice. And in the name of the moon, we'll punish you. Uh, um, um, uh. hey, spiky hair, uh, are they for real? And well, all the Sailor Guardians attempt to charge at Lord Slug, but Lord Slug pretty much just waves them away, away with a single attack, and then we got Goku and Krillin charging in, in an attempt to um, subdue Lord Slug, working as a team here, and um, I suppose the biggest difference at the, at the moment is that Gohan and Piccolo aren't in bad shape at this point of the story like they are in the original. So, with um, a bit of teamwork from the Sailor Guardians and everyone, who are basically firing up pot shots at Lord Slug whenever they can, because it's clear that um, Krillin and Goku, at, at least as they are, are currently no match for him. Krillin's pretty much down and out of the fight, and um, the best thing the Sailor Guardians can do at the moment is pretty much keep their distance and try and assist Goku as best they can. If it looks like Lord Slug's getting too much dominion over Goku, they step in and attack and try and give Goku their chance to get a breather and the fight continues and so forth and so forth. But the point is, eventually everyone is slowing down and getting weaker. However, Mercury is able to buy um, quite a bit of time with her bubble spray and is able to um, cause at least a, a mist. And um, essentially, they're off resorting to a tactical retreat. Ugh. You think you're going to escape me with mere smoke? And this actually causes Lord Slug to get into his giant Namekian form earlier than his original. Goku hasn't even gone false Super Saiyan yet. But he is about to. As the Sailor Guardians continue their... Um, Assault on Lord Slug, who pretty much end up a little bit scared stiff to see a giant Namekian stepping on, st stomping around the city. They are essentially doing what they can. You pitiful insects cannot hurt Lord Slug! 
and well with um, Piccolo with the realization that Lord Slug is an Omekian and he Piccolo remembers hang on I can do that too and so we actually get Piccolo in this version of the story powering up to his um, giant Namekian state as well although he's not quite as big as what um, Lord Slug managed to do but it, it is enough to give um, Slug a bit of a um, tussle and it almost looks like a Namekian wrestling match between, between the two giant Namekians and um, but it's it's still very much clear that Lord Slug is definitely the more powerful out of the two. Piccolo might not last long, and all the other Sailor Guardians are pretty much wounded, passed out, and beginning to succumb to this um, nasty cold weather thanks to the terror freezing process of the planet. Everyone's trying so hard. Meanwhile, it's hopeless. This guy's picking us apart. But if there's nothing to give, we don't have a chance. We need more power. And, um, well, the realization of the hopelessness of Goku's situation triggers a sort of um, new transformation. Yes, Goku has finally gone full Super Saiyan. And well, since they've already worked out that Slug is an Omekian, that Goku's not going to be shocked by that realization and power down from the transformation. A crucial mistake he made in the original version of the story. And well, we've got angry false Super Saiyan Goku going full on at it at Lord Slug and he is thrashing him. So, yep, Q, Q stupefy, stupefy from Disturb, because the thrashing is beginning. And Goku is not stopping this time. He's not giving Lord Slug a chance to breathe here, and is attacking him with everything he's got. And, um, well, with a false Super Saiyan-powered Kamehameha... Lord Slug is pretty much destroyed right then and there. And well, now it is time to deal with um, the terror freezing. And well, just like how he destroys it in the um, original, he begins powering up a spirit bomb. However, However, just to make absolutely sure that it destroys the machine, Usagi and Chibiusa power up their silver crystals and are able to gain some extra energy for the spirit bomb. And well, it begins to take it out for sure. Now, I know I just said Lord Slug was um, dead and my bad. He's not quite, because he jumps out out of nowhere to try and stop the spirit bomb. And then he ends up dead, blowing up with the machine. Like he does in the uh, original. Yeah, I meant to say the Super Saiyan Kamehameha just damaged him pretty badly. My bad, guys. Anyway, correction made and done. And well, the aftermath is done. The Earth is once again a nice, beautiful, blue-skied planet. Um, and, well, at least this time, Piccolo didn't have to resort to ripping off his ears and making Gohan whistle again. And was still in relatively alright shape. Everyone gets a Sensu Bean. And, um... With, um, a bit of a celebration, the movie rolls out to its closing credits and that's where we're going to be leaving things right now so what do you guys think did you think um that this was maybe a little bit too easy for the um sailor guardians and dragon team to get rid of lord slug after all remember the additional of having the sailor guardians there definitely gives the gives our heroes 
a bit more of um, fighting strength against enemies such as this. And well, how are things going to go as we cover the next movie, Cooler's Revenge? All this and more next time. Don't forget to um, like and subscribe, and I will see you guys again next time.